um, did Jesus really exist? Is there any historical evidence of Jesus Christ? Um, when you talk about Jesus, we are talking about uh, him and the Trinity because the Bible tells us that uh, in Colossians 1.15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So how he looks is exactly how God the Father looks. And, uh, and uh, of course, that tells us that God himself came here on earth and he became man. For by him were all things created. You see, Jesus created all things that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, okay? And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And uh, finally, and uh, he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So, Jesus is a very important uh, character uh, for our salvation. And many people say that uh, probably Jesus was not, uh, you know, Jesus was, he did not exist. He did not come on earth. Now, I want to show you a proof that um, Jesus really was here. And uh, typically, when this question is asked, did Jesus really exist? When this question is asked, the person asking qualifies the question with outside of the Bible. You know, if we uh, we want to qualify it, then let's today get out from the Bible and see, did Jesus really exist outside from the Bible? Okay? Outside from the Bible. We do not grant this idea that, uh, you see, the Bible cannot be considered as a source of evidence for the existence of Jesus. But uh, we want to show the people like atheists and all those other people who say, oh, no, it's just a story, it's just a fabricated story in the Bible. No. I want to show you outside the Bible that Jesus truly existed. Okay? All right. So the New Testament contains hundreds of references to Jesus. That, that's okay. We understand that. And there are those who date um, uh, the writings of the gospel to around 2nd century AD, more than about 100 years after Jesus' death. Even if um, this were the case, which we strongly di uh, dispute, eh, of course, in uh, terms of um, ancient evidences, writings, less than 200 years after the events took place, that are considered very reliable evidences, okay? Now, further, the vast majority of scholars, that is a Christian and non-Christian, will grant the epistles of Paul, okay? The people who, we're looking at it outside the Bible. There are so many testimonies out there. Now, the first evidence is um, the epistles of Paul. You, you see, um, when we talk about the epistles of Paul, we have to understand that um, they were written by Paul in the middle of the first century AD. That's about less than 40 years after Jesus' death. In terms of ancient manuscript evidence, this is extraordinarily strong proof of the existence of man, of a man named Jesus in Israel in, his first, uh, in around uh, the first century AD. Okay, so that one we have to understand. And also something else you have to understand is uh, uh, it is also important to understand this, that uh, uh, in uh, around AD 70, the Romans invaded and destroyed Jerusalem. Okay, and uh, most of Israel slaughtering its inhabitants was uh, something which was well known. Everybody knew about what really happened, okay? It's documented everywhere. Entire cities were literally burned to the ground. And uh, we should not be surprised then if uh, much of the evidence of Jesus' existence was destroyed, okay? But uh, many of the eyewitnesses of Jesus still lived, but many others, uh, they were killed, okay? So these facts likely may limit the amount of surviving eyewitness testimonies of Jesus, but there are still many out there who can testify that it is true that there was a man called Jesus. Now, considering that Jesus' ministry was largely confined to a, you see, a relative, a relatively uh, an important area, you know, in a, in a small corner of the Roman Empire, there's a surprising fact 
okay, a surprising amount of information about Jesus that can be drawn from secular historical sources. Some, some of the more important historical evidences of Jesus uh, will include uh, uh, the following. You see, I, I want to show you specific just secular history so that you can be able to understand, okay? Now, let's go into details about the secular history. Now, the first one that I'm going to show you is um, there was uh, the Roman Tacitus, okay? Roman Tacitus. Now, this guy is considered one of the most accurate historians of the ancient world. Mentioned, um, he mentioned several things. He said that uh, a super, uh, superstitious Christians, uh, you know, we can say into brackets, from Christus, which is a Latin for Christ, you know, this is what he was saying. There was a guy who was a Christus, a Christus, a Christian, who suffered under Pontius Pilate during the reign of Tiberius. Uh, Suonius, there is a guy called Suonius, the chief secretary to Emperor Hadrian, wrote that also there was a man named Christus. The same way this guy spoke about uh, Christus, who is Jesus Christ, okay? Who lived also in the first century, that is around, uh, 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 around that time of the first century. So this guy, just go and read his history, he has spoken about that, about Jesus being there in those days. Now, there's another guy called uh, uh, Flavius Josephus. Now, this is the most famous Jewish historian. You can go and check that on the books. And uh, his uh, antiquities, in his antiquities, he refers to uh, James, the brother of Jesus, who was called Christ. And there's a controversial verse that is, uh, uh, says, the, uh, where he said, now that uh, now there was about this time Jesus a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man, for he was uh, one who wrote surprising feasts. That is a text which this guy was uh, talking about. And uh, he was a Christ. He appeared to them alive again the third day, and th uh, the divine prophets had pro foretold this and ten thousands other wonderful things concerning him. You know, one of the versions usually reads like that. And uh, this time there was a wise man named Jesus. I'm continuing. I'm just reading from uh, somewhere else. Okay. Uh, at this time there was a wise man named Jesus. His conduct was good and he was known to be virtuous. And many people from among the Jews and other nations became his disciples. Pilate condemned him to be crucified and to die. For those who became, uh, but those who became the disciples did not abandon his discipleship. They reported that he had appeared to them three days after his crucifixion, and that he was alive according, uh, alive according he was perhaps the Messiah concerning whom the prophets have recounted wonders. This, this, their words from Flavius Josephus. Just go and read them. Okay, I just noted them in a. In, a, in a, a, a text so that I can be able to read for you what exactly he was talking about. Now, after that, we have another guy here who also confirmed, okay? He was called Julius Africanus. Julius Africanus. Now, this guy quotes the historian Thales in a discussion of darkness that followed the crucifixion of Christ. He talked about there was some darkness which happened after the crucifixion of Christ. This this guy, some historian. Okay, another one. I'm just putting this one here so that you can take time and go and research them for yourself and see that truly Jesus was here, even from the secular history, you can find that. Now, this other guy is called uh, uh, Pliny the Younger. And uh, in letters uh, recorded, uh, uh, recorded earlier on, uh, he said that the early Christians worshipped uh worshiping he they used to worship jesus as god and they were very ethical and also included he included a, a, a story that uh, a reference to the love feast of the lost supper he included something to talk with these people they 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 also were celebrating something called the lord's supper which was uh, from their master jesus who they worshipped as god that is, a, that is also uh, confirmed by Pili the Younger. Now, after that, 
if you know something called the Babylonian Talmud, okay, the Babylonian Talmud, that uh, was um, some time back in the is a, is a part of the Sanhedrin, forty three, forty three a. That's that's what I read. I I don't know what exactly that means. Now, this Talmud confirms Jesus' crucifixion on the eve of the Passover. And the accusations against Christ of practicing uh, sorcery and uh, encouraging Jewish apostasy. They say that, hey, this guy called Jesus he used to practice sorcery. You know, they could not understand the miracles of Jesus. And they're wondering, hey, this guy must be a sorcerer or something. So they can confirm totally that there was a guy called Jesus who was doing some weird kind of stuff. Another person who confirms that Jesus truly was here is a Lucian of Samosata. Now, this one was a second century Greek writer who admitted that Jesus was worshipped by Christians and that Jesus introduced new teachings and that he was crucified for them. And also he said that Jesus' teachings included the brotherhood of believers and the importance of conversions and the importance of denying other gods and uh, he said also Christians lived according to Jesus' laws and believed themselves to be immortal and were characterized by contempt, uh, contempt for death and re renew, uh, renunciation of material goods. You see, there's the same way Jesus tells us that we are alive in Christ, we are immortal in Christ, we are not going to die. <laughs> this guy confirms about the same. He says, yes, it's true, it's true. These people used to believe in that. That is the, the, the early, you know, the, the, the people who used to worship this person called Jesus. He knows very well. Someone else that I want to show you also in the history, he was a philosopher called Marabar Serapion. Marabar Serapion, okay? Now, this one confirms that Jesus was thought to be a wise and virtuous man. And uh, he was considered by many to be the king of Israel but was put to death by the Jews and lived in on the teachings of his followers. Okay? This is another guy explaining the same thing. And uh, if you will not believe that, you can still understand, go and uh, check all the Gnostic writings. Okay? That is the Gospel of Truth, the ap uh, apo uh, Apocryption of John, the Gospel of Thomas, the Theatres on Resurrection, and so forth. All those Gnostic writings, all that which mention Jesus, they, they explain very well that there was a guy called Jesus back then. You see, we can almost reconstruct the Gospel just from none Christian sources. If you look at all those sources that I've shown you, we can reconstruct the whole gospel from that. Jesus was called the Christ. Joseph said that. He did magic. He led uh, Israel into new teachings. He was hanged on Passover from, for them. <laughs> Remember the Babylonian Talmud uh, in Judea? Tacticus. He claimed to be God and would return. Eliezer, and his followers believed and worshipped him as God, Pili the younger. If you, if you combine all this, they can basically just form the whole doctrine of salvation. You see, you can deny every other fact, you can deny the Bible, but you cannot even deny history. History is out there to show you that Jesus completely existed. Now, this there's this one overwhelming evidence for the existence of Jesus, both in secular and biblical history. Perhaps this is the greatest evidence that Jesus did exist, okay? And it's the fact that literally thousands of Christians right now, and even in the first century AD, including the 12 apostles, they were willing to give their lives and martyrs for Jesus Christ. You see, people will die for what they believe to be true. But no one will die for what they know is a lie. Remember all these Christian martyrs? Do you think somebody can go and give his life for something what they know is a lie? And it's documented for sure they are martyrs, people who laid their lives down because of Christianity. Do you think these people can do that over something they know is a lie? I don't think so. 
Even if you deny the Bible, you cannot deny evidence. You can deny evidence. The evidence is out there. There are testimonies and testimonies revealing Jesus outside the Bible. The epistles of Paul. Paul was a, a literal man. He, he wrote about Jesus. He wrote the things that he knew. And those letters are out all over, everywhere. We know yeah, the Romans invading Jerusalem. Everybody knows about that. Yes, we know very well. And uh, that one was documented. Even Jesus himself, we talked about how Jerusalem would be invaded. So it's there, everything, you know. In the secular history, everything is there because showing very well that Jesus did actually exist. Tacticus, yeah? Flavius, Josephus, Julius Africanus, Pliny the Younger, and many others, Babylonian Talmuds, like just I've shown you, Lucian of Samosata, yeah? Marabar Serapion, you know, all the Gnostic writings, like I've documented everything. This one is showing that truly Jesus was here on earth. And he taught people and he walked on this earth and he did all those great and mighty things. You may be there, you may deny everything, you may deny if really Jesus was true, if the Bible is true, is that God really came as man, but you cannot deny. Evidences from people who will tell you, yes, I'm not a Christian, but I've heard that story. I've read that story. He is there, literally, is there. Go and read all the secular, uh, secular writings about Jesus, and you'll find there was a man who was there 2,000 years ago who was crucified, and it was said that he rose again. You see, the, everything is there. Deny, agree, but all these matters, they cannot agree to be killed for nothing. Who will just go and lay his life for something which he believes is a lie? I don't think so. And if you're there and you want to believe in this true Jesus, then it's all about the gospel. Remember that Jesus died for your sins. All this that he did, he came, and all these people can prove that really Jesus was here. He came for what reason? Because we were sinners. And while we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. He laid his life for us so that now we can be able to be reconciled with God. And if you believe the gospel, then you'll be saved. What's the gospel? Gospel means good news. Good news about what? What Jesus did for you. That's exactly what the good news is all about. What did he do for us? He died for our sins. He shed his blood for us. So that if you believe that Jesus died for your sins, then you'll be saved. And once you understand why and uh, uh, what was the reason why he died, and you believe how he died, that he shed his blood, because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. When you understand that and you believe that, then confess it to God and tell him, Jesus, this is what I have understood now. For sure you died for my sins. You were here 2,000 years ago. There is proof, there is evidence of everything. You died for me. And now I believe in you. I trust in you. Please be my Lord and my Savior. And when you trust that and you lay all your burdens unto him, then you're saved, my friends. You're saved. And when he comes back, the second time, he's not going to come back like, uh, you know, that sacrificed guy, that uh, person who was killed at the cross. He will come with a rod of iron to judge. So you have to be ready. Hope this has been a blessing to you. It has been able to help you to understand what exactly Jesus did and that for sure he was here, even from the secular history. If you like this video, please give it uh, a thumbs up and also you can share to your friends. Let them be able to understand that for sure Jesus was here. And also you can subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a new video because we post new videos every day to edify you and to teach you new things. God bless you and have a blessed time.